So today we're going to be talking about RF energy harvest. So basically RF is in the air all around us. It comes from our ham radio, it comes from our Wi-Fi, it comes from emissions from our microwave, it comes from literally everything, right? So we have all this uh, radiation all around us and it is an energy. Now oh, there's a lot of fake videos that talk about harnessing this energy and a lot of it's fake and overdone, but I'm going to be really sincere with you on the capabilities of this and we're going to do some fun experiments. So what you're looking at here is the Joe Tate Ambient Energy Harvesting. He's the one that designed this circuit specifically and I've been working on some other stuff but for the sake of this video we're going to keep it simple stupid and we're just going to look at this circuit here and we're going to build it. So we have an antenna that comes in through here and it comes in between two ceramic capacitors which is model 475 uh, is what I'm using which is one microfarad but his model actually uses two microfarad I don't have two so I'm using one and it goes into a network of diodes these diodes are basic IN4001 rectifier diodes silicone and you could probably replace those down the road with something with a lower voltage drop and be a little bit more efficient and then lastly we have two electrolytic capacitors and these are about micro, uh, 50 microfarad but of course, if you'd like to increase the energy storage, you can increase that up uh, as well. So what this does is it takes RF, which is an AC-like signal, it's not AC, and it rectifies that RF into DC over here. And so we have a plus and a minus at the end that we're able to actually draw power from. Now, depending on where you're at, how close you are to transmitters, um, will determine how much energy you're actually able to harvest over time. Me personally, if I hook this device up to my HF antenna, about every 10 hours I generate a volt, which isn't really bad considering it's just in the air. But we're gonna go ahead and wire this circuit up, and then we're gonna have some fun with it. I'm gonna show you guys like lighting LEDs and powering calculators and that type of thing. If you like this type of content, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the notification bell, that way you get notifications for my channel. Uh, typically we do about two videos a week, but I've narrowed that down to one. Life's a little crazy right now, sorry guys. But yeah, do please subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So let's, let's go look, take a look at the circuit. Alright, so here's our two ceramic capacitors, here's our two electrolytic, and here are four diodes, and here are some wire, jumper wires just in case we need them. And that should be all we need to get started here. So. We know that the antenna is going to connect in between these two ceramic diodes. So we can go ahead and put those into the breadboard. Make sure you get the diodes pointed in the right direction. This could have probably done, be done a little bit more efficient, but this is our ending circuit. So here, here you can see the two ceramic capacitors, and I've made a tap where I can put an antenna here. In the back here would be where the ground is that goes in between the electrolytic capacitors and the two rectifying diodes. So we can tap that as for ground. And here's our electrolytic capacitors here on this side with a negative of being over here and then our positive being on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the measurement with a multimeter of nothing connected, make sure all the capacitors are drained zero. Then we're just going to let it set for a little while and see how much millivolts it actually gains on its own. So let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that those capacitors are drained. All right, so let's see how much energy you've got. And hopefully uh, you all can see that multimeter. So, as of right now, we have about four millivolts saved up in the circuit. Um, just so you guys can see that. There we are. Well, you saw the four millivolts. So there's not really much there. Now, what I have here is my antenna feed line connected to an alligator clip. And so we're going to use that to tap antenna line into the circuit. And what we should see is a increase on the multimeter already. So we're just going to go ahead and connect that antenna in there like that and now let's start measuring the voltage point a point nine ten milliwatts eleven milliwatts twelve milliwatts thirteen milliwatts fourteen milliwatts so it's it's going up and so you guys can see what I'm talking about here 
the millivolts are coming up. Now it's eventually going to reach a threshold where the meter actually draws more current than it's, uh, uh, it's charging. But that's pretty much it for right now. So we can see that the millivolts are climbing by themselves. Now I don't have a ground. I live in the second floor apartment so it's really hard for me to get an earth ground. If I was to connect this to a good ground that, would, that number would be increasing much more efficiently. But this is what we're going to have to work with right now. So let's just leave this for 30 minutes or so and come back to it and see how many millivolts we got. Alright, so it's been about uh, 20 minutes. And we're just going to check and see how far we came here. So, and this is going to start draining a little quicker since the multimeter is attached. But we got about 150 uh, milliamps, which is about 0.15 volts. Not bad for 20 minutes of trying this out. But realistically, if you would want to do this, you would put a capacitor with a higher uh, capacitance in there, let it charge for a period of days or overnight, and you'd be able to power some stuff. Now, it takes about a day for me to get a couple volts, which is enough to power an LED for a second or a calculator. I'm not going to sit here and film that over a day and, and do that, so we're just going to do some fun experiments with this. So, I'm going to take this clip off. Actually, we're going to leave the clip here, and we're going to attach some stuff to this and power it up. So, first let's just do a calculator. So this right here is this a basic calculator. I've taken out the battery, so there's no power whatsoever. The only power that can come in right now is through these right here, which are actually attached to the solar panel, panel of the calculator. But I've taken the solar panel out. So we are going to attach it to the calculator, and then we're going to artificially inflate this circuit so you guys can see how it works. So what we can do is artificially inflate this with some uh, RF. So I'm going to take my FT3DR here. I'm just going to wind this around here so we get maximum RF from this antenna here. And we're going to transmit. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. So that's at 1.6 volts there now. <clears throat> so 1.5 volts and we'll try it again. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. 1.9 volts. So we almost came up to 2 volts there. Uh, just from transmitting on the radio itself. Well, now we completely bottomed out. Oh, it's because we lost the capacitor. So you can kind of see the effect here of what's going to be happening with this. Now, we are artificially pumping it up. That doesn't mean that you can't, over time, capture the stray RF without artificially pumping it. I've, I've done so. But, for video's sake and demonstration, that's what we're going to do. So, let's take a look at this calculator again. Again, there's absolutely no juice. So now, when we connect it, it's actually going to draw energy from the circuit. Now, it's not actually enough to power it right now, but let's transmit with a radio and see if we can't get it there. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio tests. And we have power on our calculator. See? So it's drawing energy from this capacitor, so it's not a whole lot. But, just for an example, that worked. Now let's get out an LED and light it up. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo performing radio test. So we're going to connect the LED now, finish the circuit, and see if we can't get this LED to light up. And 
And if it does light up, it's going to be just for a short second, so try to pay attention. And there we go. We can actually transmit here and maybe light it up again. And without the antenna. Yeah, there we have it. Pretty uh, simple little circuit, pretty fun project to do, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a pretty fun video to do, uh, so I hope everybody enjoyed it. It's a really fun beginner's electronics little project, especially if you're a ham radio operator, uh, because it has to do with the RF itself. So if you all enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, and uh, subscribe to the Instagram and the Twitter as well for uh, early updates on the videos coming out that week. And join us on the live streams on Sundays at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. 73 to you.